Human beings are a disease, a cancer of this planet. You are a plague, and we are the cure. When does a machine become a robot, and a robot become a human? Defining what a robot is isn't easy. There may be general agreement that it's a machine, but beyond that, the definitions vary from expert to expert. Most people agree that for a machine to qualify as a robot, it must have some form of intelligence, with the capacity to be programmed and to perform tasks commonly done by humans or animals. In addition, most people would require a robot to have some human or animal physical features, like feet, eyes or ears. The word robot was introduced to the world in 1921 by the Czech playwright Karl Kapek in his play Rossum's Universal Robots. Robots have come a very long way since then, yet have much further to go. Science fiction helps us guess how far. Writers like Kapek love robots because they allow their imaginations free reign. They can endow their robots with omnipotent powers for good or evil. Readers and cinema goers love robots too, because they're machines with very human traits. We can even develop affection for them. As with the two lovable robots in Star Wars, more seriously, we can visualize future robot soldiers with superhuman strength fighting wars in place of humans, or robots working on industrial processes or in locations too hazardous for humans. After the 2011 Japanese nuclear disaster, Urgent work had to be done near the reactors. Radiation levels were too high for humans, yet only humans had the skill needed to deal with all the problems. This environment would have been perfect for the deployment of robots, and they were used there for some of the operations. But no suitable robots were available for the most critical work. Hopefully, they will have been developed in time for similar operations in the future. This raises the question, how advanced are today's robots? Amazingly, advanced is the simple answer, and they're getting more sophisticated all the time. Much of the development in robotics is funded by the military. Robots are being developed to carry heavy loads across uneven terrains and take the load off soldiers' backs. Some of these robots walk on four agile legs like big dogs or small mules. They have extra wide backs to carry greater loads and a lower center of gravity for more stability. One such animal, appropriately named Big Dog, is at an advanced stage of development at Boston Dynamics, a company working for the US Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. It can walk up steep wooded inclines, through snow, and even along the ties of a railroad. It doesn't fall over when forcibly shoved from the side, but instantly adjusts its gait and steadies itself, just like a four-legged animal. At a less serious level, there's a humanoid robot, Nao, developed by the French company Aldebaran Robotics. This little guy stands on two legs and is just 58 centimeters high. He doesn't fall over thanks to his computer-controlled accelerometer and gyrometer. He doesn't walk into obstacles either, thanks to his two camera eyes and ultrasound echo system. He has many human-like features, he can talk in both English and French, and even recognizes the person talking to him. Some of his capabilities could make us humans envious. Wouldn't it be handy if your brain could just download all the images you remember of your last vacation? Well, if Nao had gone with you, he could do just that. He can also surf the web and communicate with other Naos by Wi-Fi. Cute as he is, Nao is a really serious chap. He's the world's most widely used humanoid robot for academic purposes, mainly because he's fully programmable and uses specially designed software compatible with Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. The more robots display human traits, the more we interact with them, as though they were rational beings. Of course, they're not, at least not yet. Nevertheless, their similarities to humans brings up very profound questions. Will robots be rational in the future? Will humans always be fundamentally different from robots? What does being human mean? Could robots become more intelligent than we are and pose a threat to the human race? A scenario often portrayed in science fiction. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. The dangers of such excessive machine That's power are vividly illustrated by HAL, the computer with the monotone voice in the iconic film 
2001 A Space Odyssey. Some might say that Hal was not a robot, he had no limbs and no way to move about, but he had no need to. He had eyes everywhere and electronic fingers connected to every part of the spacecraft. His ultra-sensitive brain knew the crew's thoughts, feelings and intentions. What we learn from this cautionary work of science fiction is that man must always be able to override the machine. That seems obvious, but in the future it may prove easier said than done. How was programmed to ensure the mission's completion and the integrity of the ship's systems for the duration of the long trip to Mars. When the crew decided to alter the mission, Hal couldn't allow that to happen. He did all in his power to prevent it. This mission is too important for me to allow you to jeopardize it. Hal showed that robots don't need to have physical limbs to wield great power. Little electronic computer programs that scour the internet looking for information for search engines like Google are called robots. The internet itself is like an enormous living entity with tentacles enmeshing the globe, constantly searching for and disseminating data at enormous speed. Malicious software is a good example of how parts of this huge robot can be controlled by malefactors. The success of malware suggests that in some ways this robot we call the internet may already be beyond our control. Right now it's not a compliment to be told that you act like a robot. Soon, it will no longer be insulting. It will mean that you're a highly intelligent individual with enormous talent. Dr. Stuart Russell is a computer scientist in the University of California, Berkeley, and has studied AI for more than 35 years. He has been trying to answer the question of what happens if we succeed in building a machine that is smarter than us. The topic is more urgent in the last few years, and the resources on AI projects has grown enormously. There is a growing number of researchers in the field that have expressed concerns about the consequences of an artificial general intelligence. Previously called strong AI is the notion of building machines with a mind. Given the curve of technological progress and futurist Ray Kurzweil's singularity predictions, AGI progress is within reach and researchers are working out issues related to morality specifically addressing questions like whether AGI can be rendered as per our moral system. When a machine is in a position to cause the death of numerous people, such as the autopilot of a passenger airplane, certain safety standards are required. Such requirements will need to be specified for autonomous machines capable of making decisions in moral dilemmas. According to Gertzell, AGI is a highly complex, highly dynamic, self-organizing system. Subsequently, this program can even end up deleting the moral rules one programmed in, or it may reinterpret the terms. Researchers expect that the future superhuman AGI will have the ability to react, respond, and achieve goals in varied range of environments compared to humans. If their goals are not aligned with ours, then there will likely be a point when their goals will be achieved at the loss of ours. As we increasingly rely upon machine intelligence with less supervision by human beings, we must be able to count on a certain level of ethical behavior on the part of machines. So how can we be sure that these systems will always make the decisions we would want them? Artificial morality has become increasingly salient since the early years of this century. Though its origins are older, Isaac Asimov already famously proposed the three laws of robotics, requiring that first, robots must not harm humans or allow them to be harmed. Second, robots must obey human orders provided this does not conflict with the first law. And third, robots must protect themselves provided this does not conflict with the first two laws. As autonomous and intelligent systems are becoming more and more present in our society and are increasingly involved in making decisions that affect our lives, our future hangs in the balance of making the right decisions now when it's still not too late to stop the apocalyptic scenarios it is often portrayed in science fiction movies. Thanks for watching. Did you like this video? Then show your support by subscribing, ringing the bell, and enabling notifications to never miss videos like this. Thank you.